In this video, we're going to have a look at what is new in Microsoft Excel's MR210 exam. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of IDoData.com. Being certified in Microsoft Excel allows you to say to your current employer and new employers, yes, I can do Excel, and it's not just me saying that, it's also Microsoft. The MR200 has been for several years the entry-level certification for Microsoft Excel. However, in the middle of 2022, it was decided that this would now change. The MR200 would now be solely for Office 2019, and there would be a new version, the MR210, which is for the latest version, currently the 2022 version. Tasks would no longer be individual tasks in the exam, but comprehensive project-based testing. So when you pass the MR210, you demonstrate the ability to complete a realistic Excel project. You will have proven competency in Excel at an industry entry level certification and that you are ready for the job market. So what is it that you are required to do for the MR210? Well, if I scroll down on this web page, we can see the skills measured are manage worksheets and workbooks, data cells and ranges, tables and table data, perform operations by using formulas and functions, and manage charts. And a more detailed list is available if you click on the Download Exam Skills outline. Now, there's a lot of similarities between the 200 and the 210 exam. In this video, we're going to have a look at the new topics. Now, there are some topics which have changed. For instance, we used to have import data from text, import data from CSV. This has been merged into one import data from text files. We're not going to go down into that level of detail. However, we are going to look at a handful of new topics, such as import data from online sources. So how can we do that? Well, here we have Excel, and I'm in the data ribbon. Now, if we have a look at the get and transform area, we first of all have got from web. So this is good if you've got a specific website that you want to go to. So you click on that, you say what your URL, what your website is. So for example, I could use the BBC's market data. So if I type in the URL for that and click OK, the next question is, what sort of access do you have? Is it based on your Windows credentials? Is it a username and password? Or if it's the web, it could well just be anonymous. You don't actually need any credentials. So I'll click on Connect. It's establishing a connection, and now I can say what particular area I want. So maybe I want the UK markets. So here we've got the UK markets, and I can load the data in to Excel. So here we can see the data from the web, and I can just refresh it whenever I want. Now, an alternative way of getting information from the internet, again in the data tab, is get data. So I can get information from databases. So SQL Server Database, Microsoft Access, SQL Server Analysis Services. I can get it from Microsoft Azure, which is Microsoft Web on the cloud. And I can get it from the Power Platform. The Dataverse is another type of database. And there are many other different sources that you can get it from. Next, I want to have a look at Manage Comments and Notes. And if you're used to an earlier version of Excel, this is actually new. So if I go into insert, you can see we can insert a comment. And you might be saying, okay, we've been able to insert comments for ages. Well, what you previously knew as comments is now a note. If I insert a comment, then I can start a conversation and somebody can then reply to it. So it is threaded just like it is in Microsoft Word. If you want the older version of comments, that is now called a note. And I can do that by right and clicking on the cell and going to new note. I can also get to new comment there. So this is an old comment called a note. So for the exam, you'll be required to know how to insert comments, reply to them, and you can also delete the thread and resolve the thread, which means all of the comments are done. And it's the same with notes how we can manage those. Going further down in the Manage Data Cells and Ranges, we've got Generate Numeric Data by using RAN Between and Sequence. So RAN Between, this is 
just I want a number between. So equals ran between. I want a number between 1 and 10. So there we get the number 3. I want a number between minus 100 and plus 100. Sequence allows me to say, okay, I want 10 rows. So here we've got 10 rows starting from 1 to 10. And you notice each time that the computer calculates, the rand between also recalculates. But I don't want it in just one column. I want it in two columns. And I don't want it to start at the number 1. I want it to start at the number 10. And I don't want it to go up in 1s. I want it to go up in 5s. So that is the sequence formula. Going further down, we've got the format multiple worksheets by grouping. So if I was to highlight more than one worksheet, so I hold down shift, for example, and select a second worksheet, I can then say, well, I want to have cell D20 in both worksheets to have a yellow background. I'll also go into page layout, and I want them to fit to one page width, for instance. In addition to using shift, you can also use control. So if I click on the first spreadsheet and then hold down control and click on the last, that now means I've got two spreadsheets highlighted. If I go away from that by clicking another spreadsheet, click on the first and then hold down shift, I get four spreadsheets highlighted. Going further down, we have got two new functions. Sort data by using sort function and get unique values by using the unique function. So let's go back into my very first spreadsheet. So here we have sheet one. What I've got here is a list of districts in Afghanistan. And it might be that I want them sorted by the number of people. Now I could just go to home, sort and filter and sort Z or Z to A. But suppose I wanted a separate list. Well, I can do that by just typing in equals sort. So where is my list? I will highlight my list, close the tab, and press enter. And here we can see my list. Now it does include the headers. So let's change that. Let's not include the headers. So here we have A2 to C11. And I'm going to insert some blank cells and then just copy the headers separately. So we've only got one formula that does all of this. And it's sorting at the moment by location 2. But suppose I didn't want it to sort by location 2. Suppose I wanted it to sort by number of people. Well, that's no problem. I can specify as an optional second argument what column do I want it to be sorted by. So I want it to be sorted by the third column. And here we can now see we've got it sorted by number of people. But suppose I didn't want it sorted ascending. I can sort it descending. So that's the third argument, whether it's ascending or descending. So I'm going to say minus one for descending. There is then a fourth argument as to whether you're sorting by columns or sorting by rows. Additionally, suppose I wanted a list of all of my location twos, but only one time in each. Well, that's no problem. I can use the unique formula. So if I say equals unique and have A2 to A11, for instance, and close the brackets. That gives me just the unique items, northeast, northwest, and east. Now, the great thing about all of this is that if I change the data, so I'll change A7 from northwest to north, then my analysis immediately changes. We now have north. And there are optional arguments. So do I want it to sort by columns or by rows? Well, in this case, I want it to be sorted by rows, so I'll say false. But the last argument is, do I want only those items that appear once and no more times than once? So I'm going to say true to that. And that just gives me north, which is the only one which has appeared once. So in this video, we've had a look at all of the new skills which are required in the MO210 certification as opposed to the MO200. If you want more about it, then why not have a look at the official Microsoft website, which you can see up here. And if you want to learn all of these skills, then why not have a look at my brand new MO210 course, which is now available on Udemy. There's a link to that in the description to this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. In the next video, we'll have a quick revision guide for the MO210. And we're going to start in the next video with all of the topics in the Manage Worksheets and Workbooks section. 
please join me in the next video. Please click on it on the screen to see that video and continue your exploration of the ML210 exam. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.